hello guys welcome or welcome back to my channel a little bit of everything where i talk about a little bit of everything welcome to part two of the recap of the oc i hope you enjoyed season one and i hope you're ready for season two because it's actually my favorite so without further ado let's just get into the video it's now the end of the summer school is going to start soon and everyone is still a mess the Collins's house is being remodeled and it's taking forever and Kristen is not at sandy because seth still hasn't come home and tells him to go look for him back in chino ryan is working construction and he gets a visit from sandy who asks him to help him convince seth to come back home Ryan turns him down, but Sandy gives him a plane ticket anyways so that he can go to Portland where Seth is staying with Luke. On the OC, Marissa and Summer are spending time at her pool and it's hinted that Marissa is suffering with an eating disorder and that she has some kind of a relationship with the yard boy DJ. We learn during that conversation that Summer is dating a new guy named Zach. He is perfect. He's like the complete opposite of Seth, at least on the surface. He plays water polo, is traditionally attractive, very charming, son of a congressman, all around the type of guy that someone like Summer should be dating. Marissa also tells Summer that Julie is trying to bond with her and when they were supposed to go out and spend time together, Marissa has a mental breakdown and throws the furniture into the pool. Ah! 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 It's so bad that she calls Jimmy and the two agree to work together in order to help her. Sandy goes to Portland and talks with Seth to try and convince him to go back home, but he doesn't listen and tells him that he's going to stay with Luke. Ryan tells Teresa about the whole drama with Seth, and while she at first doesn't want him to go, after he gets a phone call in the middle of the night from Marissa, even though she doesn't know that Marissa was the one who called him, she realizes that he really does want to go, so she tells him that it's fine and that she will go to the doctor with her mom. Ryan goes to Portland and gets there right when Sandy is leaving. While there, he gets a phone call from Teresa who tells him that she lost the baby and breaks up with him, but we hear her mom asking her if he believed her basically telling us that it's a lie and that she just said that so that he could go back and be happy. On the adult side, Caleb is paranoid that someone is watching him because the DA is investigating him and it's hinted that the company may have some money issues because he tells Julie not to use the company card. When Sandy comes back from Portland, he tells Caleb that he needs to get his shit together because things are about to get really bad for him. Back in Portland, Ryan and Seth talk about Teresa losing the baby and Ryan tells him that he's going to go back to his job in Chino and Seth decides to stay in Portland but at the last minute, they both decide to get back to Newport and to their parents. The next day is the first day of school and the boys, especially Seth, don't want to go to school and face the girls. When the girls see them at school, Summer runs away and Seth goes after her trying to explain himself but she tells him that it's too late and that she has a boyfriend. Meanwhile, Marissa runs to Ryan and asks him to talk about everything that happened after school. Ryan meets up with the principal who tells him that it's time to get ready for college and that with his grades it would be easy for him to get a scholarship so that the Coens don't have to pay for it. So she gives him the homework of writing in the paper everything that he likes and dislikes about his classes in order to choose what career he wants to study in college. Meanwhile, Seth decides to reopen the comic book club in order to find some distraction from Summer. At the meeting where they are trying to find members, Zach shows up. Seth was going to reject him because he's a water polo player, but he accepts him after he realizes that he knows about comics. Sadly for him, he also finds out that Zach is Summer's new boyfriend. Summer takes Marissa back home and they talk about the boys, naturally, but when Marissa goes to her room, DJ walks in and kisses her. He asks her to see her after school, but obviously she can't because she's going to see Ryan. When the girls go back to school, she's all stressed out and starts drinking alcohol because she doesn't know whether she should tell Ryan or not that she has been in a relationship with DJ and Summer tells her that if it's over between her and him, then she shouldn't tell him. Marissa has the genius idea to take Ryan to her house while DJ is there and they kiss in front of him. Ryan invites her to the carnival to throw at the beginning of the school year and she agrees to go with him. On the adult side, Jimmy and Haley are still living together in a yacht, but she has gotten a job offer in Japan and she really wants to take it. She feels that it's time to grow up and that Jimmy is holding her back, and when she tells him, he asks her to marry him. She, of course, tells him no and ends up leaving. Caleb meets up with Sandy and tells him that he's being accused of bribery. They have proof of the company sending money to the city council, but he denies that he was bribing them. He doesn't want to tell Sandy the whole truth, but asks him to represent him in the case, but Sandy says no. When Sandy takes call to his house, he comes across Julie and tells him about everything, and she tells him that he has to help them because if they fall, so will Kirsten. At the house, Sandy has a fight with Archie, the guy that is remodeling his house, and Archie ends up leaving after Ryan tries to tell him a way to get the job done quicker. Sandy also yells, at Kirsten who told him to apologize to Archie but later apologizes to him for it and he tells her about what's going on with her dad. Ryan visits Summer and apologizes for getting Seth to leave 
She tells him that it's not his fault and that if Seth had cared about her, he wouldn't have left in the way that he did and that he would have found a reason for them to break up regardless. She also tells him that she and Zach are just dating and he's not her boyfriend. So Ryan tells her to give Seth a second chance so that they can be like before, but she tells him that she and Marissa got over it and that he should talk to her. At Marissa's house, she and DJ have a fight over Ryan and the fact that their relationship is a secret. She cries and they kiss right when Ryan shows up. The next day, Ryan tells Seth about everything, including the fact that Summer doesn't have a boyfriend. So Seth decides that he's going to have a big gesture like the one that he had at school the previous year in order to get her back. At school, Ryan talks to the principal. She sees the graph of the renovations for the house and adds him into advanced math and physics classes so that he can pursue a career in architecture. That night, everybody goes to the carnival. Ryan and Marissa argue. She's mad because he left and he's mad because she lied. She tells him that she won't see DJ anymore, but Ryan tells her that they should be just friends. Meanwhile, Summer is with Zach, and when he leaves her alone for a minute, she sees Seth trying to get on top of a table and tell her that he loves her right when Zach shows up. Summer turns him down and tells him to leave her alone. When the boys go back home, Caleb apologizes to Kirsten and tells her that everything he did, he did for the family, and he gets arrested. The next day, Seth and Ryan talk about how self-absorbed Seth is, so he decides to change and become a better person. At school, we meet a new girl named Lindsay. Lindsay is a transfer. She's supposedly poor. She shows up in a beat-up car and gets made fun of. All she wants to do is go to class and graduate early so she can go to college. Ryan and Seth go to the cafeteria, and Seth decides that he's going to buy summer tickets for a concert for her and Zach to prove that he's changed. Meanwhile, Ryan meets Lindsay and both spills his drink on her and accidentally hits her in the face, which makes her already bad opinion of the kids at the school even worse. On the girl's side, they are talking about how perfect Zach is, and Summer tells Marissa that her dad is very happy about her dating a congressman's son and that he wants to meet him. She says that she's not going to have dinner with the two of them because of how horrible it was when her dad met Seth, but later changes her mind after Marissa teases her about possibly still being in love with Seth. Meanwhile, Ryan goes to class and has to sit next to Lindsay. He hits her in the head with his back and the two are put into a physics project together. The next day, she tells him that she already gave the teacher their project and that she has no interest in working with him, so he goes to the teacher and tells him that he didn't do anything in the project and he tells them that they have to work together. After school, Seth goes to buy the concert tickets at the bait shop and we meet Alex. She is the embodiment of the cool girl trope. She has tattoos, color hair, works at a club, is bisexual, has casual sex, etc, etc. She's the one selling the tickets and he tells him that they have been sold out, but still she gives some of the guys who work there and she tells him that they get them because they work there so Seth decides that he's going to start working at the bait shop in order to get the tickets. He gets them and goes to give them to Summer who accepts them and invites Zach. However, he tells him that she should go along with Seth and fix things with him before they continue their relationship. On the adult side, Sandy gets Caleb out of jail and tells him that he needs to talk to his partners at the law firm about becoming his lawyer. He also tells him that it's time for him to step down and let Kirsten take over the company. Julie goes home and tells Caleb that she wants to be involved, but he tells her that Kirsten is taking care of everything and she should just go back to the kitchen. He doesn't say that, but that's what he implies. Sandy gets fired from his law firm who tell him that as long as he represents Caleb, he can't work there. That night, Caleb, Julie, Kirsten, and Sandy have dinner together and he tells them that he's going to announce a new president for the company and that that president is going to be Julie. Kirsten gets mad and quits, which leads to Sandy giving Caleb an ultimatum and telling him that if he doesn't fix things with Kirsten, he will not be his lawyer. At the concert, Ryan sees Marissa and they decide to go together while Seth and Summer talk about how and why he got the job. He kisses her, she runs away, and tells him that if they can't be just friends, that they are over. The next day, Seth goes to talk to Marissa and asks her for help to try and fix things with Summer. She tells him to apologize and tells him that she's having lunch with her dad, but to not go there. He, of course, doesn't listen and goes there just to see Summer her dad and Zach having lunch together. Meanwhile, Ryan and Lindsay see each other and she apologizes to him for judging him without knowing him and Marissa sees them kind of playing around and gets jealous. Caleb also apologizes to Kirsten and tells her that Julie is just going to be a figurehead and she will be the one actually running the company. Seth decides that he needs to get a girlfriend now that Summer has a boyfriend, so when they go to school, they try to pick a girl and Seth meets Lindsay. He decides that he wants to go out with her and convinces Ryan to get him a date with her. Ryan goes to ask her if she wants to go on a date and at first she thinks that it's him asking but he clarifies that it's with Seth which makes everything awkward because she had already said yes. Back at home, Marissa invites DJ to a concert that night and tells him that she wants to try and make things work with him. They have an argument, but she tells him where she will be at and asks him to go. Ryan goes to tell Seth that he fixed him a date with Lindsay and Seth freaks out, so he decides that they should go on a group date and convinces Alex to go with Ryan. Summer goes to the concert with Zach and spends the entire night talking about Seth, which of course makes Zach angry and they have an argument. While they are fighting, Seth shows up and she tells him to leave her alone and leaves with Zach. 
Meanwhile, Seth also spends the entire night talking about Summer, which makes Lindsay mad and she ends up leaving. Ryan picks her up at the bus stop and they admit to having feelings for each other. When Marissa is leaving, she sees DJ who tells her that he's there for his friends, but afterwards he catches up to her at the beach and they kiss. Seth and Alex also kiss after he apologizes for the date. On the adult side, Sandy decides that he's going to start his own practice and go back to being a public defender. He and Caleb have breakfast together and Sandy tries to get him to tell him why he was giving the municipality money, but he keeps blowing him off and tells him to talk to his old secretary because she's the one that created the escrow. However, when he goes to talk to her, he finds out that she's dead. That night, he follows Caleb and finds out that he's the one giving money to Renee Wheeler directly, who is the woman that he's supposedly bribing. He asks him if they are having an affair and he tells him that it's much deeper than that. At the office, Julie shows up talking about redesigning the place and Kirsten tells her to let her take care of the important stuff, but Julie wants to be involved. So at the meeting, Julie basically kicks Kirsten out and takes over even though she has no idea what they're talking about and is not prepared for the investor's questions so she ends up embarrassing herself. Julie goes to talk to Jimmy after the meeting and he gives her a prep talk about the things that she's good at and using that to her advantage. So she ends up planning a party at the Coens' house with all the investors where she charms them with her flirting and convinces them that everything's going to be okay. The next day, they realize that the winter dance is coming up and both Marissa and Ryan decide to go alone. Ryan doesn't want to move on too fast with Lindsay and Marissa doesn't want to invite DJ because her parents are helping plan the dance. Still, Ryan does go to ask Lindsay out to the dance and she turns him down and tells him that she wants to be just friends. Meanwhile, DJ goes to pick up Marissa during lunch and they go to her house where Julie sees them in her room. She fires DJ and tells Marissa that she's grounded but we know that Marissa does not respect her mom so this is meaningless to her. Zach is upset because Summer keeps talking about Seth but Ryan tells him not to worry because he has a girlfriend. Meanwhile, Seth invites Alex to the dance but she tells him that it was just a kiss and that they will never date. The next day, Ryan is helping Marissa with the props for the dance and they start playing around, which Lindsay sees. And Seth tells her that it's not too late to invite him, but when she goes to do so, Ryan tells her that he's going with Marissa. Seth goes to Summer and asks her for advice about Alex. They start talking and Zach sees them and gets upset when he sees them playing around. So he starts avoiding Summer and tells her that he's not going to the dance and that she should go with Seth. Seth follows the advice that Summer gave him and starts being cold towards Alex and quits the job. That night, Ryan is ready for the dance and Seth decides not to go, but Kirsten and Sandy annoy him until he does, and the Fab Four end up going to the dance together. At the dance, Julie sees Ryan and Marissa dancing together and is happy about it because at least he's not DJ. She and Jimmy kiss on the cheek and it's implied that something else is happening. Zach decides to turn around and go to the dance, and when he gets there, he sees Seth and Summer slow dancing and storms off. Julie compliments Ryan and he talks with Marissa about DJ. When he shows up, Ryan gives her his jacket and tie for her to give to DJ. Meanwhile, Ryan goes to Lindsay's house and asks her to go out. She tells him that it's not going to work out, but he tells her that he's not going to give up and leaves. Seth goes to the bait shop and talks with Alex about the whole thing, and she tells him to fight for Summer, so he goes back to the school and punches Seth. At the same time, Alex shows up and apologizes to Seth for causing this. Summer and Zach go back to the dance, while Alex and Seth go back to the bait shop and kiss. Meanwhile, Julie sees Marissa and DJ dancing, and when she's going to separate them, Jimmy shows up and tells her that his parents threatened to take his inheritance away if he didn't break up with her, and he told them to go to hell because he loved her, and she kisses him. On the adult side, the court case is advancing, and Caleb is still not talking to Sandy, and neither is Renee, because her lawyers didn't let her answer any questions. Sandy tracks Renee down and tries to talk to her and convince her to tell the truth. He confronts Caleb that night, and he confesses that he has an illegitimate child with Renee. Sandy tells him that he needs to tell the truth so that they don't go to jail, but he refuses to do so. Renee and Caleb meet up that night and talk about the whole thing. He tells her that he wants to get her and the kid out of the country, but she refuses. At the end of the night, Renee goes to Sandy's house to come clean about the whole thing, and while she's leaving, she sees Lindsay coming out of Ryan's room because she was there to apologize to him and tell him about her feelings for him. So if you haven't catched up yet, Renee is Lindsay's mom and she is Caleb's daughter. The next day, Caleb and Sandy meet up and Sandy tells him to tell the truth or else he and Renee are going to jail. He refuses to do so and Sandy quits. It's now Christmas again. Ryan invites Lindsay to have dinner with them and Seth invites Marissa and Summer. But when Ryan tells Sandy, he tells him that it would be best if she wasn't there because of everything that's going on with Caleb and ends up telling them that she is Caleb's daughter. So Ryan decides that he has to uninvite Lindsay and tell Seth to uninvite Summer and Marissa because he doesn't want Lindsay to get the wrong idea, but neither of them is able to uninvite the girls. On the adult side, Julie and Jimmy have started having an affair. Sandy meets up with Renee and asks her to tell the truth, but she refuses again and the next time we see her, she's dropping Lindsay off at the Coens' house. But she turns around and asks Kirsten if they can talk. When she's about to tell her, Caleb comes into the room because he was going to tell Kirsten too. Then the kids go into the kitchen and so do Julie and Jimmy. And then they tell everyone that Lindsay is his daughter. 
Well, that almost ruined my marriage. Oh my god. Oh my god. No way. He gets slapped by Kirsten and Julie, and Julie, Kirsten, and Lindsay run away. Ryan goes after Lindsay, who tells him that she doesn't want to be around the Collinses and that it's best if they don't talk to each other anymore. When he goes home, he realizes that Kirsten has locked herself in the closet and doesn't want to talk to anyone, but he gives her a speech and she ends up coming out. After seeing how horrible the day turned out, the kids come up with a plan to make everybody happy. Summer and Marissa go to Jimmy's dad to look for a generator and an extension cord. Marissa and her dad quickly talk about Julie and it turns out that she was hiding in the boat. They agree that they are making a mistake but continue to sleep with each other. Seth goes looking for Lindsay at the beach and convinces her that they are family and they go together to her house which the kids have decked out on holiday decoration and she and Kirsten hug and agree to try and have a sisterly relationship. Now that Kirsten and Lindsay are trying to have a relationship, Ryan is worried about how Kirsten is going to react when she finds out that they are dating. Zach comes back from his holiday break and tells Seth that while in Cabo he came across his ex who was his teacher and is a grown ass woman and that they kiss. Seth tells him to tell Summer and to apologize. Renee testifies and tells the truth so the charges against Caleb are dropped and he's free. Julie finds out about this while with Jimmy and they end up having sex. Marissa who has decided to introduce DJ to Jimmy shows up right when Julie is leaving and sees them kissing. Marissa confronts her dad that night and tells him that it's time for him to grow up and behave like a real dad and break up with Julie. Jimmy comes clean about the affair to Kirsten and Sandy and tells them that he's going to sell his yacht, leave Newport and move to Hawaii. He tells Marissa the next day and tells her that he's going to have a good party at the Collins' house. Seth goes to Alex's house and sees that there is a guy there that she threw a party and that she had been in Newport for some time but didn't contact him. She calls him cute and he takes that as an insult thinking that she's not taking him seriously because he's not a bad guy so he decides to change and that night he gets wasted to impress her. While drunk he tells Summer about Zach's secret and Summer gets mad at Seth because he told Seth instead of telling her and he promises that it won't happen again. That night at the bait shop Lindsay and Ryan talk about how he's acting weird but before anything can happen Alex tells him that he needs to take Seth home because he's drunk and vomiting. The next day Sandy grounds him but he of course sneaks out of the house that night to go and see Alex. He takes Caleb's car in order to impress her and she tells him that she likes him because he's a good guy and the police shows up looking for the car. During the party Julie gets mad at Jimmy for not telling her about him living beforehand but he tells her that obviously their relationship isn't going anywhere and that this is the right thing to do. Marissa shows up at the party completely drunk with DJ and ends up making a scene and almost uncovers their relationship in front of everyone. DJ later calls Jimmy and he goes and apologizes to Marissa. Ryan and Lindsay kiss to see if doing so would feel like kissing a sibling when Kirsten enters their room and they agree to keep their relationship a secret. A few days later Seth calls Ryan and tells him to hide from his parents the fact that he didn't come back home and it's with Alex but obviously Sandy notices that he's lying. On the adult side Sandy forgot about his anniversary with Kirsten and she gets mad at him so he has to plan something last minute. Still, she tells him that she doesn't think that it will be a good time to leave the boys alone, but he grounds them and tells them that if they don't behave, they will have to spend the night at Caleb's house. The boys agree to being good, but that night, Sandy sees Seth trying to sneak out of the house and Ryan and Lindsay almost having sex. The next day, they apologize to Sandy and Kirsten and they get grounded again. Because of all of this drama with the boys, Kirsten gets mad at Sandy for being too soft on them and cancels the reservations that they had. The next day, Lindsay goes to talk to Kirsten to apologize and Kirsten tells her that they should try to be friends instead of sisters. She then goes to tell Ryan about this and he tells her that they should try to be friends for the sake of her relationship with Kirsten and she ends up crying because she's now lost both of them. Summer gets jealous because Seth is having sex with Alex so she decides to have sex with Zach but when she tells him that they should take the next step he interprets that as her wanting to meet his family and sets up a dinner with them that weekend. The lunch with his family goes really bad so she starts avoiding Zach thinking that he's going to break up with her. On the adult side the Riviera magazine wants to take a photo of Julie, Caleb and Marissa and Julie tells Marissa to be home and not to be with DJ but obviously she doesn't listen and during the photo shoot DJ shows up but he ends up leaving after realizing that Julie is not okay with him being there. Julie goes after him and tells him that Marissa is using him and gives him a blank check to stay away from her. The night of their anniversary Sandy hires two police officers to look over the boys while they go to have dinner but they show up at the restaurant and tell them that the boys have escaped. They go to the bait shop and it turns out that the whole thing was a plan from Sandy to give her a better anniversary party. At the party Zach and Summer see each other and he tells her that he likes her and that 
that there are many ways to be smart so they don't break up. Julie goes and tells Marissa about giving TJ a check for him to go, but he goes and tells her that he knows that she's using him to make her mom mad and that he doesn't want to do that anymore so they break up and he gives her the check. Ryan talks with Kirsten and she apologizes and tells him to hang out with Lindsay. Seth also introduces Alex to Kirsten and both she and Sandy accept her. A few days later, Sandy tells Seth to invite Alex to have dinner with them but when he goes to tell her, she tells him that her ex is in the city and she has to deal with that so he should go away for a bit. At school, Lindsay gets insecure about Marissa and Ryan spending too much time together, so he tells her that she should try to become friends with Marissa. Summer and Zach have their six month anniversary, and he tells her to go have dinner with him, but she turns him down, and Summer and Marissa plan a girl nights out, and they invite Lindsay. At school, Seth is freaking out about everything that's happening with Alex, so he decides to call her and go to her house to see the ex, but Ryan tells him that it would be best if he goes, and he seeks the ex, Jody, who turns out to be a girl. The next day, he doesn't want to tell Seth about what he saw, but he's still freaking out. Zach shows up also freaking out about summer and the boys decide to have a boys night. The boys decide to stay home but the girls go to the bait shop. Marissa sees Alex talking with her ex and saves her from an argument. Back at home the boys decide to go to the bait shop to see summer and Alex. At the club, Summer sees a guy from school and Zach sees them, he gets upset about it and she apologizes to him. Seth sees Alex and asks her to see her ex and they end up having an argument about everything that's going on and he breaks up with her. Ryan finds Lindsay and Marissa and Lindsay is completely and totally wasted. Ryan takes her outside and leaves her at the beach but when he comes back she's gone. He thinks that she went into the beach but Seth finds him and tells him that Marissa and Alex have her. When he goes to the office, he ends up yelling at Marissa and Alex tells him to leave and that they will take care of Lindsay. Ryan and Seth go back home but then decide to go to Alex's house to apologize to her and Marissa. They do so and then they leave. In the house, Marissa and Alex watch a horror movie together and there is some tension between the two but nothing happens. On the adult side, Kirsten asks Sandy for ideas to help fix the company's reputation. He tells her that they should finance low-cost housing and that that would make it a win-win situation for everybody. When Kirsten goes to tell Julie about this idea, she tells her that her idea is creating a magazine for Newport. Kirsten thinks that it's a good idea, but Sandy and Caleb want her to turn it down. Kirsten tells Sandy that she will try to get Julie to pick his idea, but he tells her not to do it because it's time for him to find his own way. Seth asks Zach and Ryan for help trying to get Alex back, and they tell him to go and get what he wants, so he decides to do just that. At the Nichols house, Julie goes to Europe, and Marissa is drinking alcohol early in the morning and decides to stay home after lying to Caleb about feeling sick. She's obviously lying and calls Alex to hang out. While they're talking, Seth shows up to Alex's house and he meets Jody, who is coming out of the shower. At school, Zach and Summer see him and she tells him to go and ask him what happened. He does and sees Seth drawing, so he decides that they're going to start working on a graphic novel. Ryan and Lindsay talk about Caleb and he tells her to call him, but she says that she wants him to be the one to call her first. Ryan knows that that is not likely, so he goes to the office to talk to Caleb and tries to convince him to have a relationship with Lindsay, but he insults him and tells him that if he wanted to have a relationship with her, he would have one. Marissa and Alex hang out at her house and they talk about Jody. Alex realizes that this heart-shaped necklace that she had bought with Jody is gone, and Marissa tells her that they should go to LA to find it. The next day, while Marissa is getting ready, Caleb walks in and tries to tell her off because she wasn't home the prior day, but she tells him to go hang out with Lindsay if he wants to be someone's dad. Caleb listens to her and ends up calling Lindsay and asking her to have dinner with him. She invites Ryan, who tells him that it's not a good idea for him to go, but she insists. They have dinner and it goes really bad when Caleb accuses both of them of wanting money from him and they end up leaving. That night, Zach and Seth hang out and talk about comics, and Ryan tells Seth not to show him the drawings that he made of Summer. Summer shows up to the house angry because Zach was supposed to pick her up an hour earlier, but when she sees the drawing, she asks him if he hasn't drawn her, to what he says no, but when she goes back to his room, she finds his other drawing book that has her in it. After seeing them, she goes back to his house and tells him that she's willing to pose for him for new drawings. In LA, Marissa and Alex go to Jody's house to pick up the things, and Alex ends up having an argument with Jody. Meanwhile, Marissa goes and looks through Jody's jewelry and finds the necklaces. While Jody is trying to convince Alex to stay, Marissa goes out and tells her that Alex is her girlfriend and that they have to leave. Marissa actually stole both necklaces and Alex keeps one while giving Marissa the other one. On the adult side, Sandy is trying to start his own practice and is looking for an office. He chooses a surf house by the beach, but while he's seeing the house, he gets a phone call from his college teacher who asks to see him. When they meet, he asks him for help finding his daughter Rebecca, who was Sandy's great love before Kirsten and who disappear after helping blow up a nuclear lab and Sandy agrees to help. He goes to jail to try and talk with the guy that she used to be friends with and he tells her that she's dead but he doesn't believe him 
so he continues to investigate. Kirsten gets upset and tells Sandy that he's still in love with Rebecca and he has to let her go. Sandy gets a phone call confirming that she's dead and decides to go talk to his professor about it, but when he's about to do it, guess who walks in? Rebecca. Sandy spends the night out and goes home in the morning. He doesn't tell her that Rebecca is alive, he gets a phone call from Rebecca and they agree to seeing each other at night, with him making Kirsten believe that he's going to see his professor. When they see each other, they talk about their lives and Rebecca tells him that she's going to disappear again and asks him for help telling her dad. When they go talk to him, he asks Sandy for help to try and clean up her name and she confesses that she wasn't there when the lab was blown up. When Sandy goes to tell Kirsten about helping his professor clean up Rebecca's name, he once again doesn't tell her that Rebecca is alive. Marissa and Alex are still hanging out and Marissa is still skipping school, basically living with Alex. That night, Marissa asks Alex if she can stay in her house and she says that it's fine but that she wants to know what's going on between them, so Marissa freaks out and goes home, but then she goes back to the bait shop and they make up. Ryan tells Kirsten about what happened and she agrees to convince Caleb to have dinner with the three of them. Caleb starts insulting Ryan, but when he starts defending himself, Caleb has a heart attack. Seth and Summer are still working together on the comic and he tells her that he's worried that their past will affect their working relationship when Zach shows up and tells him that he talked to a graphic novel company and they are interested in making it into a real comic. That night, Summer models for Seth and they almost kiss when he was trying to tell her how to pose. They freak out and she leaves. Sandy takes Rebecca to his office, tells her to stay the night there and agrees to take in her case. He keeps insisting that Kirsten can't know about it because she would become an accomplice in hiding a fugitive, but we know the truth. He doesn't want her to know because he still has feelings for Rebecca. At the hospital, they find out that Caleb is fine and he apologizes to both of his daughters. Lindsay basically breaks up with Ryan again because she wants to have a relationship with Caleb and the two of them don't like each other. Alex visits Seth to give him a drawing that he left in her house. They talk about how they help each other to get over their exes and she wishes him a good luck with Summer. Seth then goes to Somerset's house and they agree to spending the least amount of time possible together, but Zach tells them that he got them a meeting with the graphic novel people and are going to San Diego. When Sandy goes back to work with Rebecca, he calls Kirsten and sets up a dinner with her. He talks to Rebecca who is being very passive aggressive about Kirsten and tells him to go home to his family. That night, Kirsten decides to go to Sandy's office to give it a makeover and she finds out that Rebecca is alive. Rebecca. The day before Valentine's Day, Sandy is overcompensating for lying to Kirsten, but she's not amused and destroys the roses that he gives her. When they actually talk, she's obviously mad that he has been lying or at least withholding information from her and calls him out on using the attorney-client privilege as an excuse and he tells her that he did what he needed to do. Seth is freaking out because he has to go with Zach and Summer to San Diego on the one year anniversary of him and Summer having sex. So he goes to her house and tries to talk to her about the relationship but she blows him off and they end up leaving. Ryan goes to see Lindsay and tells her that they should spend time together on Valentine's Day but she tells him that first he needs to apologize to Caleb. I don't know why because Caleb was the one that was rude and disrespectful but whatever. When leaving the hospital, Kirsten tells Caleb that he needs to do things right with Ryan and he agrees to invite him over. Meanwhile, Julie returns for her trip to Europe and she tells Marissa that she wants to have a better relationship and asks her to have dinner. At the dinner, Julie basically tells Marissa that she needs to become closer to Caleb so that she can secure her inheritance. After her dinner, she goes back to the bait shop, sees Alex and they kiss. Sandy takes Rebecca and pays her a hotel room and tells her that he doesn't know if he should be the one with her case since it's ruining his damn marriage. And Rebecca continues with her passive aggression, acting like Kirsten and even Sandy are crazy for not wanting her to get in the middle of their relationship. When he goes back home, he plans a Valentine's Day dinner for them, and that night he goes to meet his professor and the man dies. Still, he tells Kirsten to get ready for dinner, but when they are about to leave, he gets a phone call from Rebecca, who tells him that she's leaving and asks him to see her to say goodbye. He at first says no, but Kirsten tells him that if he wants to go, she's not going to stop him, so he goes leaving his wife alone in Valentine's Day to go see his ex. He ends up not coming back at all and Kirsten cancels the dinner reservations. When he finally has the decency to think of going back to his wife, Rebecca tells him to stay and they kiss before he leaves. I wish I'd never run. Before leaving, he also tells Rebecca not to run away 
but obviously when he goes back home Kirsten is understandably pissed and locks him out of the room. Meanwhile in San Diego the kids are about to enter the meeting when Zach tells Seth that he and Summer are going to Italy for his sister's wedding and of course he gets jealous. They end up not doing the meeting because the guy was busy or something so they go back to the hotel. There Seth realizes that Zach and Summer are going to sleep in the same bed so he freaks out and doesn't sleep at all worried that they are going to have sex. So the next day at the meeting because of the fact that he hasn't slept and his jealousy he ends up ruining everything and basically telling both Summer and Zack that he thinks that he and Summer should be together. They end up talking about it, Seth goes back home and Summer and Zack stay in the hotel. Back at the Nicholas's home, Ryan tries to talk with Caleb but he starts insulting him once again and Ryan leaves telling Lindsay that they can always spend next year's Valentine's Day together. He comes back on Valentine's night and tells him that they should play pool and that if he wins he has to accept him as Lindsay's boyfriend. They have a little heart to heart, Caleb accepts him and Lindsay spends Valentine's Day with Caleb. After coming back from San Diego, Seth is basically depressed not only because he ruined things with Summer but also because he doesn't know if she and Zach had sex. So he first decides to ask Summer but Ryan tells him that that would be weird so he decides to ask Zach and obviously Zach doesn't tell him anything. Alex and Marissa are officially dating. Alex has the idea to throw a party and tells her to invite Summer so that they can meet but Marissa hasn't told Summer yet but promises to do so soon. When she goes to do it and invite her to the party, she backtracks and ends up telling her that she spent Valentine's Day with her mom and invites her to Caleb's house. While this is happening, Summer gets a phone call from Zach who tells her about Seth and she goes to his house and after seeing the state in which he's in, she ends up telling him that they didn't have sex and Seth goes back to normal. Seth talks with Zach who tells him that he's waiting for the right time to have sex with Summer, probably in Italy, and Seth goes back to how he was before. On the adult side, Sandy goes to the professor's funeral and Kirsten wants to go with him but he tells her that there won't be an actual funeral because of the feds and that it's just going to be he and Rebecca. The part that annoys me the most about this scene is Sandy once again trying to act like Kirsten is crazy for not wanting them to spend so much time together as if they didn't kiss the night prior. Anyways the feds show up to the house and question Kirsten. She only tells them about the professor but doesn't mention Rebecca and once again she and Sandy have an argument where Kirsten tells him that she thinks that he has made a decision about who is more important to protect between her and Rebecca. Kirsten later goes to visit Rebecca and asks her if she's in love with Sandy to which Rebecca says yes and Kirsten ends up telling her that she basically needs to get out of their lives because she's ruining their relationship. She leaves and leaves Sandy a letter and he gets mad at Kirsten. Caleb calls Lindsay and Kirsten to his office to tell them that he plans to have a party in which he's going to announce that he will adopt Lindsay. Julie's obviously not happy about it and convinces Caleb to get a DNA test after finding out that they hadn't gotten one done before. Lindsay tells Ryan about the adoption and he doesn't seem happy about it thinking that it's too soon but he eventually agrees to be unhappy for her. Julie visits Renee and tells her that Caleb is going to ask for a DNA test and she asks Ryan for help to convince Lindsay that the adoption isn't a good idea because she's not sure that Caleb is her father. He tries to do it but Lindsay ends up getting mad at him. Marissa goes to Alex's house and freaks out after seeing her friends there. She ends up going to Alex's house and telling Summer that she's dating Alex and then goes back to Alex's house after the party and spends time with her and her friends. That night at the party, Caleb is avoiding Lindsay when Ryan gets to the party and tells Lindsay the truth but she doesn't believe him and goes to tell Caleb that it's time to announce the adoption but he of course tells her that they should do a test before and she leaves the party. Julie ends up taking over the party and announcing that the magazine is coming out. Seth goes to Summer's house, apologizes and tells her that she should leave with Zach and to not worry about him and at the end of the night the three Cohen men are alone in the couch. Sandy and Kirsten are still not talking to each other. Sandy apologizes but he gets a phone call from the one and only Rebecca who tells him that she hasn't left and is calling to say goodbye but he tells her to stay where she is. He goes there to see her and tries to convince her of going back but when they try to go back they find out that the road is closed because of the heavy rain. They go back to the motel and Rebecca really tries to sleep with this man. He turns her down and calls Kirsten about the rain and of course she's upset but he tells her that he will try to go back home in the morning no matter what. Alex spends the night at Marissa's house and she tells her mother that they are dating. She goes back to Alex's house who seems a bit skeptical about Marissa's intentions telling her mom but eventually is happy about the situation. Ryan goes to visit Lindsay and she tells him that she has to take the DNA test that day but she's not going to take it and that she was packing to go to Chicago with her mom. He ends up convincing her to get the test done so that she can stay and tells her that he will go with her. Seth visits Summer while she's trying out the bridesmaid dress that she's going to wear to Zach's sister's wedding. He goes back home and thinks that he has to do a big gesture to win her back so he decides to buy back the summer boat 
so that they can sail together. He goes to ask Alex for his job back, asks to borrow money from her, and finds out that she's dating Marissa. Also, Marissa decides to move in with Alex. When he tries to buy the boat back, he realizes that the boat looks very different, but still he buys it and his plan is to put the boat in the pool and give Summer a ride in it. He calls Summer and asks her to go to his house before leaving, but she tells him no and leaves with Zack. Lindsay, Renee, Ryan, Caleb, and Kirsten go to find out about the DNA test result, and the result is, of course, that she is his daughter. Despite this, she decides to move to Chicago with her mom and breaks up with Ryan. Sandy tries to get back home, but it's still raining, and he finally comes to his senses, telling Rebecca that he has loved her for a long time, but he has a family and is not going to destroy it for her. They get into a car accident, and she ends up running away. At the airport, Summer listens to a voicemail from Seth, where he apologizes for how things turned out and tells her that he still misses her. She sees a kid that looks a lot like him and ends up breaking up with Zach, going to Seth's house and kissing him after he falls from the ceiling trying to fix the antenna. Seth and Summer are back together, but Ryan is a little depressed over his breakup with Lindsay. Meanwhile, Marissa is still getting used to being an adult who is supposed to depend on herself. Summer tells Seth that she and Marissa will go to the mall and maybe he can take Ryan to distract him, and Seth decides that he's going to try and get those two to get back together. Meanwhile, Ryan decides to go visit Lindsay in Chicago without telling anyone, but Seth notices it and convinces him to stay. At the mall, the guys are picking up clothes for a shelter, I think. Seth and Summer spend the entire time kissing while the other two work, and when it's time to leave, they realize that they are trapped, so the boys try to go looking for a way out. While this is happening, Ryan overhears the girls talking and Marissa saying that she misses him. Summer convinces them to stay at the mall and have fun. On the adult side, Kirsten and Sandy are trying to get back to normal after everything that happened when Sandy realizes that Kirsten is not wearing her wedding ring. She tells him that it might have fallen down the drain and that she will call someone to look for it, but he decides to look for it himself. Caleb goes to the house and talks with Sandy about what happened with Lindsay and the ring. Caleb reminds Sandy of the plastic ring that he first gave Kirsten and he decides to get a similar one and give it to her to show her that he still loves her. At the office, Julie and Kirsten are talking about the magazine when she gets a visit from a guy from her past named Lance. Lance turns out to be an ex of Julie's who tells her that she needs to give him half a million dollars or else he's going to leak a sex tape that she did when she was younger. Julie and Kirsten meet Carter, who is going to be the new editor of the magazine. He tells them that he wants to do the least amount of work and get paid, so they, specifically Julie, do not have to worry about him doing too much. They go to have dinner, but Julie ends up leaving after seeing Lance, and Carter and Kirsten have dinner alone and talk about their relationship drama. Julie goes back home, and when she was watching the video, Alex shows up, and she tells her that Marissa is just using her to get back at her. She calls Marissa while she's with Ryan, asking her where she's at, and she lies again, telling her that she's staying with Summer. Seth realizes that Summer has a postcard from Italy in her back. He reads it, and of course, she's upset about it, but she eventually tells him what it is, and he apologizes for going through her stuff. When Kirsten goes back home, Sandy gives her the plastic ring and she decides to put on her real ring, which was on her drawer the entire time. The kids are almost caught by security because the cameras catch their movement, but they end up running away and the fab four go to have dinner. A few days later, Seth is still trying to get Marissa and Ryan together, so he tells Marissa to ask him to help her design the bonfire for their spring bonfire. Summer and Ryan get mad at him for it because they don't think it's a good idea for them to get back together, but Marissa asks him to go to her house with Alex to work on it together. She calls Alex and tells her about it, and she gets jealous. On the adult side, Sandy is trying to teach Kirsten to play golf, and he asks her about who is going to edit the magazine. She mentions Carter and tells him that he used to make this magazine called Revolution, I think, for Berkeley. Sandy remembers it and tells her that he wants to meet him, and she agrees to introducing them. At the office, she's supposed to have a meeting with Carter, but he cancels it, and she decides to go looking for him. He is drunk and sad about his wedding anniversary and basically quits. Julie is still being harassed by Lance, so she calls Sandy and asks him for help. He tells her that she's gonna have to talk to the police or to Caleb in order to get the money, but she tells him that she can and Sandy agrees to talk to Lance. He does so and tells him that Julie will pay him $50,000, but Lance tells him that he will only take half a million, so Sandy ends up leaving. Julie also goes to visit Marissa and tells her to go back home instead of ruining her future. Meanwhile, Alex goes to visit Seth to ask him for help about Marissa and Ryan and he tells her about the mall, so she goes back home upset and ends up having a fight with Ryan. Back to the adults, Kirsten manages to get a Revolution magazine from Sandy, leaves it at Cardis' house, and he goes back to work. Sandy tells Julie that Lance wants the money and gives Lance $100 for the rights of the movie, meaning that if he publishes it, he will get sued, but still agrees to give him half a million and tells Julie to tell Caleb. He also advises her to find a different messenger to talk to Marissa, so she decides to get Ryan to tell her to go back home, and he agrees because he's suddenly not missing Lindsay so much. So he goes to Alex's house to look for her, but Alex tells him that she's at the bonfire, so he goes there, but before he leaves, Alex threatens him. 
At the bonfire, she shows up with two guys who almost beat up Ryan, but Marissa interferes. She and Alex have a heart to heart and realize that they shouldn't be together, so they break up and Alex apologizes to Ryan. A few days later, during dinner time, Ryan gets a phone call from his brother telling him that he wants him to pick him up from jail the following day. He's having conflicted feelings about it. Let's remember that the last time they saw each other, he got Ryan to look for a stolen car and almost got him beat up or worse. At school, Zach comes back from Italy and tells Summer that he had the time of his life and tells Seth that he's got a girlfriend named Francesca but tells him not to tell Summer because he doesn't want to hurt her feelings. Summer starts talking about him the entire time and then demands to Seth tell her what Zach told him. Keep this in mind because it will come up later. At prison, Sandy and Ryan are waiting for Trey when Sandy offers to take him home for some time until he can get back on his feet. They originally take him to a house from one of his friends but then eventually take him back to Newport. Sandy gives him money to go shopping and they go with Marissa. While there, the security at the mall tries to look over his back so he makes a scene and destroys the place. At the office, Carter and Kirsten are talking about the magazine when they are interrupted by Julie who tells Kirsten about the sex tape who tells her to tell Caleb. She tells him and he agrees to pay the money. He goes to Lance's house, gives him the money, Lance gives him the supposed only copy of the tape and then Caleb gets the money back and gets some guys to beat him up. Going back to the office, Julie realizes that Kirsten has feelings for Carter and Sandy goes to tell her about Trey and he wants to meet Carter but she tells him that it's better if they wait until the party that night. Zach goes to Summers' house to give her back the things that she left in his house and she gets mad at him for having a girlfriend even though you know she was the one who broke up with him and immediately started dating Seth. So she then goes to Zach's house and his mom tells her that the girlfriend isn't real and that he spent the entire trip crying. That night before the party Ryan accuses Trey of stealing a watch but he shows him the receipt that he bought it and leaves the house so Ryan goes with Marissa to look for him. He doesn't want to leave with him, but after the two get into a fight, they end up going back to Newport. Summer then gets mad at Seth for telling her that Zach had a girlfriend, even though she demanded that he tell her. That night during the party, she basically demands that Seth apologizes to her, and he ends up telling her that he was jealous and annoyed at the fact that she was jealous and annoyed that Zach had a girlfriend, and she ends up telling him that he had nothing to worry about. Also about the party, Carter tries to figure out why Kirsten has been avoiding him, but he realizes that Julie thinks that there is something going on between them, so he tells her to talk later, and Kirsten gets a drink from Lance, who is working as a waiter at the party and yes as you can guess he plays the porn video on the screen and humiliates Julie in front of everyone. Carter and Sandy finally meet at the end of the night and Carter apologizes to Kirsten for flirting with her. After the whole scandal, Julie and Caleb decide to go to Europe to wait for the whole thing to blow over and since Marissa is home alone, Kirsten tells them that it's fine for her to live with them for the week. On the adult side, Kirsten tells Sandy that she wants him to help her with the planning of a charity event and he asks Stray to help him. There, he sees the egg from Risky Business and learns that it's worth $10,000. Kirsten puts Marissa in the pool house and Trey and Ryan in the guest room. At like 6 a.m., both Ryan and Marissa go to the kitchen, and right when they're about to hold hands, Trey walks in and tells them that he's going to look for an apartment, and Marissa offers to go with him to see Alex's apartment since she left the city. Meanwhile, Seth and Ryan go to help with the charity event, taking the photos, and Kirsten shows up with Carter. At school, Zach and Seth agree to leave their graphic novel behind by donating them and separating the profits, but while they're helping with the charity event, Carter shows interest in their comic stories and Zach gets excited about it. However, before he moves forward with it, he goes to tell Summer, who tells him that if they go back to the comics, she's going to kill them. Back at the house, Trey is celebrating with Ryan that he found a place, but he gets a phone call from the landlord. Originally, they had agreed that Trey would do works around the place in order to pay for the deposit and stuff, but when he finds out about his criminal record, he takes that back and tells Trey that he has 24 hours to find the money. Important to know that Marissa heard this phone call. Ryan wakes up in the middle of the night and sees that Trey isn't there, so he waits for him and Trey lies, telling him that he was doing some work for the landlord. The next morning, Trey talks with Marissa, who offers to help him find the money, but he turns her down. Carter also visits and offers Seth a meeting with one of his friends to show them the comics, and Seth convinces him to agree. Marissa and Summer go to her house to try and look for things to sell during the option so that she can find the money for Trey, and she finds these teacups that are apparently very old and might be worth a lot. During the auction, Summer finds out about the graphic novel and makes both Seth and Zach agree to letting it go. When Ryan goes to put Marissa's item in the bag, he realizes that the risk of his neck egg is gone. Trey goes back with the money and tells him that they can go get it back, but Ryan goes with Seth while Summer and Marissa make up time until he gets back. The boys find the egg and go back to the charity event right at the end of the auction. Marissa goes and gives Trey the money that he needed for the apartment that she got from Kirsten, who bought the teacups because they used to belong to her mother. The next morning, Trey leaves to move into his new apartment. He apologizes to Ryan, but he doesn't accept his apology, so he just leaves. At school, Marissa and Seth try to convince Ryan of going to see Trey and give him a housewarming gift, but he doesn't agree and tells them to leave him alone. 
At the office, Carter tells Kirsten that they are getting sued for a story that they ran and that he wants to talk to Sandy about it. Julie is back and Kirsten tells her that after everything that happened, she can't be on the cover of the magazine because there were complaints about it and she surprisingly seems okay with it. Back at school, Zach and Seth are talking about their comics when Summer comes around and they start pretending that they are talking about sports, but she doesn't believe them and gets mad at Seth for lying to her. But she eventually tells him that it's fine for them to move forward with the comics thing and that she doesn't want to know anything about it. Zach and Seth go to a meeting and the person that they're meeting with is a woman. So Seth gets all sexist about it, but it turns out that she actually knows what she's talking about. And she's especially smitten with Zach. She really likes his business plan and calls him a genius. So Seth gets worried about her liking Zach more than him. Marissa goes and gives Trey the housewarming gift. She then goes to talk with Ryan and tells him that it would be nice to throw Trey a birthday party, but he tells her off. Zach and Seth are both crushing on Reed, the woman from the comics company, and Zach asks him if Summer is okay with her being a woman. But Seth tells him that Summer doesn't want to know anything about the whole comics thing. However, after having a combo with Marissa, she decides to become involved in it because it's important to Seth. So Zach mentions Reed in front of her and tells her that Seth will tell her who Reed is. Julie gets a mysterious phone call from someone asking her to go somewhere and she goes with the gun. Turns out she goes to meet with Lance and threatens him with the gun, but when she pulls the trigger, the gun has no bullets. Sandy and Carter are hanging out more and Carter talks with Sandy about the case and the two go surfing. There, they come across this woman named Erin. And that night, Sandy tells Kirsten about the whole thing and tells her that he wants to invite them both for dinner to set them up. Kirsten looks destroyed, but she agrees. At the dinner, they all have a great time and Kirsten tells Erin to be careful because he's divorced. Seth ends up convincing Ryan to go to Trey's house and when they get there, they decide to follow him and see him giving money to some guy in an alley. The next day, Ryan goes to his house to yell at him and Trey tells him that it was just a friend and that he was with his parole officer. Seth meets up with Reed to show her some sketches and to find out if she likes Seth. During the meeting, he gets a phone call from Summer and lets her believe that Reed is a guy after telling her that Reed's voice was the waitress. Julie gets a sex day from Lance sent to her house and he tells her to meet up with him so that he can give her the rest. There, she finds out that Caleb didn't give Lance the money and she gets pissed, so she asks him to buy her a drink and they spend the night together. She tells him that Caleb will divorce her, so he tells her that he can take care of Caleb if that means that she and her daughters will be fine. Marissa and Ryan throw Trey a surprise birthday party at her house and at the party, Zach invites Reed to be his date and he he ends up having an argument with Seth about her. Summer meets Reed in the bathroom, so she goes and yells at Seth and then asks Zach to take her home. Seth is getting bullied by some jocks and tries to defend him, which leads to Trey sleeping with some girl from the school named Jess. Marissa and Ryan end up in her room. He thanks her for everything, and when they're about to kiss, Jess falls into the pool. Turns out someone gave her ecstasy, and since they're going to arrest Marissa, Trey takes the fall and is arrested. The next day, Sandy gets Trey out of jail, but not really. He's kind of under house arrest. Like, Sandy is responsible for him, and that was the only way to get him out of jail. So Ryan decides that he needs to find out who really gave the girl the drugs so that he can help Trey. He asks Marissa if she knows anyone who might be responsible, and she points out a guy named Kyle, who is friends with Jess. Marissa decides to get close to Jess in order to get more information, and they agree to go hang out at the bait shop that night. Seth apologizes to Summer and invites her to the bait shop, but she's there with Zach, and he tells him that they have a meeting with Reed for the comic, which makes Summer angry. At the meeting, the boys are given a bunch of corrections that make Seth annoyed because he doesn't feel that they are taking him seriously, and Reed tells the boys that they are going to throw a party for them the next day, and Zach convinces him to take Summer to the party to get her to become involved with the process. On the adult side, Kirsten and Sandy are supposed to go on a trip together, but because of everything that happened with Trey, he can't go. So he tells her to go with Carter and Aaron. But Carter tells Kirsten that Aaron broke things up with him, so they end up going together alone. While there, they get drunk and decide that they can't drive home. They try to get a cab, but there is none available, so they get a room in a hotel. Kirsten calls Sandy to tell him about it, and he tells her that they should stay the night and go back tomorrow. And in that moment, she is told that there is a driver available, so she decides to just go home. Sandy tells the family that he knows who is the prosecutor and that it's going to be difficult to get a deal for Trey because the man is very serious and a family man, so it's unlikely that he will have compassion for Trey. And when Sandy and Trey meet up with him, he tells them that unless they have another suspect, Trey is probably going to go to jail. Like I mentioned earlier, Julie is worried that Caleb is going to try and divorce her. So when she goes home, she tries to seduce him and he tells her that he's been trying to move on from the sex date, but he's been unable to do so. So the next day, they are going to have a meeting with his lawyers. That night, she goes and meets with Lance, who once again offers to kill Caleb, but she makes him a check asking him to leave because she doesn't want him to do it. Before she leaves, they kiss and someone, probably a private investigator hired by Caleb, 
takes photos of them. When she goes back home, Caleb tells her that he will give her another chance because he still has feelings for her and they go to have dinner. At the bait shop, Summer and Marissa come across Jess and ask her if she knows someone who can hook them up. She tells them that the person she knows has nothing else, but the next day they can give her some. Meanwhile, Ryan, with his amazing people skills, tries to get close to Kyle, but that obviously doesn't work. However, he does see Kyle in what seems to be the middle of a transaction. After the party, the kids go to Sandy and tell him about Kyle, so they come up with a plan to get proof. Back to Seth and Summer, they go to the party and Seth is busy meeting people, so Summer ends up spending the night with Zach. Summer asks Seth to take her home, and while they are talking, Reed makes a snarky toast to Summer, so she once again ends up telling Zach to take her home. Back to the other kids, Marissa manages to get into the party thanks to Jess, but Ryan is the night entry, so he sneaks from the back with her help. When Jess sees Marissa, she takes her outside and she gives Marissa a bunch of pills. Ryan calls Sandy and the police shows up. They arrest Kyle and the charges against Trey are dropped. Ryan and Marissa take Trey home and they finally kiss. At his house, Trey finds Jess there and they end up starting a relationship. A few days go by and the Coens receive a phone call from Sandy's mom telling him that she's going to get married soon, so he decides to take the boys to Miami to prevent it. Ryan doesn't want to go originally because he doesn't want Trey to be alone, but after telling him about it, he tells him that he will be okay and gets a visit from Jess. Seth goes to apologize to Summer for what happened at the party and she asks him for a break and he agrees to it. She gets visited by Zach later that day and he invites her to have dinner at his house. Ryan also goes and tells Marissa and she agrees to spending time with Trey and helping him find a job. At home, Kirsten is all alone and she calls Carter who tells him that he has gotten a new job offer in New York and she agrees to give him a goodbye party in her house. They drink wine and they keep flirting back and forth. He tells her that he almost didn't accept the job because he didn't want to leave. They kiss, say goodbye and Kirsten is left there drinking alone. In Miami, Sandy meets up with his mom and she talks to him about her new boyfriend. He seems a bit skeptical but agrees to meet him. When they meet, Sandy tells her boyfriend named Bobby about his skepticism in a very passive aggressive way and he ends up breaking up with Sophie. She confronts Sandy and ends up admitting that she also had her doubts and maybe that's the reason why she called him because she wanted him to do exactly what he did. Meanwhile, the boys are hanging out with the old people at the guest home that Sandy's mom lives in where they meet this girl called Mary Sue. She tells Seth that she entered a dancing competition for the spring break special and she wants Seth to join her. However, she later tells him that it's actually a contest where he's going to have to eat wiped cream out of her body. He tries to get out of it but eventually does it and since it's televised, Summer, who has been spending all of his time with Zack, sees him, gets mad and kisses Zack. Meanwhile, in the audience, Ryan finds out that the girl is supposed to be a Christian and her boyfriend and his Bible study group want to give her and Seth a lesson for being sinners. He tries to tell Seth about it but it's too late and they end up getting beaten up. Back in the OC, Marissa visits Trey and tells him that she will go with him to help him find a job. While he's with Jess, who tells him that he doesn't have a chance with her. Also, they are doing coke. They go to the bait shop and he gets a job there, so they decide to celebrate at his house that night. At his house, they start drinking and she tells him that she needs some air, so they go to the beach. And there, he tries to assault her and she ends up hitting him in the face with a piece of wood and manages to get away. A few days later, the boys are back home. It's the first day of school and Seth is debating if he should tell Summer or not about what happened in Miami because he doesn't know yet that she saw him. Meanwhile, Kirsten is drinking at like 8 a.m. in the morning. She tells Sandy that it's tomato juice, but he ends up smelling the cup and noticing that it's alcohol. Trey calls Marissa and she hangs up on him, telling him not to call again. Seth tells Summer about what happened in Miami and she tells him about the kiss with Zach. When she talks with Seth about it, he asks her what's going on between them and she tells him that she kissed him partly because of revenge, but maybe because she feels something for him. Seth sees them and calls out Zach on his betrayal and he tells him that he's going to drop out of the comic to avoid having issues with Summer. So Seth goes and tells Reed that if Zach drops out, so will he and Reed threatens Zach with legal action because of it, so they both end up having to stay. On the adult side, Julie is trying to get Caleb back, but he doesn't want anything to do with her. She goes to talk to him and tells him that she wants him to go to therapy, but he turns her down and tells her they should go on a date right after he gets the photos of her and Lance. At the office, Kirsten is given a box that Carter left for her, a necklace. Back home, she tells Sandy that she can go on a date with him and he notices the necklace. She ends up calling Carter and hanging up after realizing that calling him was a mistake and of course, she starts drinking. Sandy ends up finding her passed out on the couch at the end of the day and ends up confronting her about her drinking the next morning. Julie and Carson end up talking about their dramas and the latter tells the former that her problems with Sandy started in the summer when the kids left and that Carter made her feel less lonely like Sandy used to do. That night, Sandy asks her if anything happened between her and Carter. She of course denies it and brings up Rebecca. He asks her if she slept with him and she storms off. That night, when Caleb and Julie are supposed to go have dinner, she gets served with divorce papers and when she goes to yell at Caleb, he confronts her with a 
photos of her and Lance. He tells her that he knows all about the affair, that she's fired, and that she has a week to find a place to live. The next day, Jess starts flirting with Ryan in front of Marissa, who sees Trey outside of the school. Ryan sees them and asks them to go have lunch with him, but they both turn him down. He ends up inviting Marissa to have dinner the next day after Seth's events, and she agrees. Seth has one of his friends spy Zach and Summer because he wants to tell her that he's still working on the comic. He does just that, and of course, Summer ends up getting mad at Seth. Ryan tells Seth that Marissa's been acting weird with him, and he decides to ask Trey. And he comes across Jess, who makes some comment alluding to Marissa and Trey having a relationship. At Summer's house, she decides that all of her problems are Reed's fault, so she goes to confront her, but Reed convinces her to take part in the event, telling her that she's going to be the most popular member of the cast. She ends up agreeing, which leads to a fight between the boys in front of everyone, and ends up with Summer storming off and Reed being mad at them. Before leaving for the event, Ryan asks Marissa if she's fine, and she tries to have sex with him, but she keeps seeing Trace's face and ends up running away. She goes home, but Trey sneaks into her room and tells her not to tell Ryan. He ends up leaving after she threatens to call the police, and while he's leaving, Ryan sees him. At home, Sandy goes out looking for Kirsten, who is at a bar drinking. There, she takes off her necklace and calls Sandy. She starts driving while drunk and on her phone and gets into a car accident. The next day, Seth talks to Ryan about how much he wants to take Summer to the prom, but their conversation is cut short by a phone call from Sandy telling them about Kirsten's accident. At the hospital, a police officer tells Sandy that Kirsten had been drinking when she was driving. He agrees not to take it any further on the condition that he gets her help. When he tells her about it, she tells him that it's not necessary, that she won't drink anymore, and that she will throw away all of the alcohol in the house. At school, Summer tells Seth and Zach that one of them will be taking her to the prom, and then they have to decide who it will be. They get told by Reed that George Lucas is interested in their comics, so they have a meeting with him, but only one of them can go because she doesn't want any drama, and that they have to choose who goes. So they decide that one will go to the dinner, and the other will take Summer to prom, but they will decide that the night of to avoid either of them trying to get out of it. Ryan asks Marissa what's going on between her and Trey, and she tells him that there's nothing going on, but he's still suspicious because he saw Trey leaving her house, so she gets angry and tells Ryan to ask Trey what happened. He tries to call Trey and is ignored, but when he eventually gets a hold of him and asks him what happened, Trey lies and tells Ryan that Marissa was the one that came on to him. Ryan doesn't know what to think, but he comes across Teresa who tells him that he should trust Marissa because she would never hurt him, unlike Trey. After the coin toss, Zach shows up at Summer's house to take her to the prom, and Seth goes to the meeting with George Lucas. There he asks him if he went to prom, and he says that he didn't and that he regrets it. While at the prom, Zach worries that Seth is going to mess things up in his meeting, so she tells him that if he's worried, he should go to the meeting. Zach leaves to meet George Lucas, and Seth leaves to go to the prom. Marissa and Summer are about to leave because they have no dates when it's announced that Summer is the prom queen and Zach is the king. She goes on stage right when Seth arrives and gets on stage to declare his love for her. Ryan also arrives at the prom in time for one last dance with Marissa. On the adult side, Julie calls to see Sandy for legal advice about her prenuptial agreement, and she has discovered that if Caleb divorces her before they've been married for a year, she gets nothing. Turns out they've been married for 11 months, so her only option is to talk him out of it or extend the whole thing for as long as possible. Caleb visits Kirsten and angrily tells her that her mom also had a drinking problem, and she ends up telling him that all of the family issues were his fault and that he will die alone. He then calls Julie to tell her that he will pick up his sleeping pills, but she asks him to go see her. He goes and we find out that she's thinking about poisoning him, but right when she was about to do it, she regrets it and throws the drink away. While she's preparing a new drink for him, he has a heart attack and falls into the pool. Sandy discovers that Kirsten has kept a bottle of vodka and confronts her about it right before Julie calls to inform them that Caleb is dead. The next day, Seth wakes up depressed about the sudden death of his grandfather, and while looking for a charger in Sandy's office, he comes across a rehab pamphlet. He thinks that it is for Sandy, but Ryan replies that he doesn't think that it's Sandy who needs rehab. Everyone is getting ready for the funeral, and both Haley and Jimmy come back to help their respective families deal with the whole thing. After the funeral, everybody goes to the Coens' house to continue the grief, and they realize that Kirsten really needs to go to rehab because after after the funeral, she's drinking straight from the bottles and lashes out when Julie and Sandy try to stop her. At Trey's apartment, Trey and Jess are talking and she puts a gun on the table, telling him that something is going down tonight and that she wants his help. He agrees and she tells him that after their business is done, they can run away together to Vegas. Meanwhile, Seth, Ryan, Summer, and Marissa decide to head to the bait shop to take their minds off of things and of course, Trey and Jess are there. They are there doing a drug deal, which goes wrong, and Jess ends up shooting at the person she was doing the deal with, so everybody ends up running away. Ryan goes to Trey's apartment and decides that he wants Trey out of Newport, and he agrees to do so. Sandy realizes that Kirsten needs serious help, and a doctor tells him to stage an intervention, so he does just that. 
Kirsten originally refuses to go, but after seeing Ryan and Seth talk to her, she agrees. Ryan and Seth are in the pool when Summer shows up to tell him that Marissa told her that while he and Ryan were in Miami, Trey tried to assault her. Seth then tells Ryan who goes to Trey's apartment. Back home, Jimmy tells Marissa that he and Julie are going to try to work things out and hopefully become family again. Marissa is very happy, but not for long because she gets a phone call from Summer and Seth telling her that Ryan is after Trey. So she goes to Trey's apartment where Ryan and Trey are fighting. Marissa tries to get Trey off of Ryan, but he pushes her away. Trey rips the phone out of the wall and lifts it, ready to smash it against Ryan's head. So as a last resort, Marissa shoots Trey on the back while hide and seek from Imohan Heap plays in the background. Season 2 was a lot. It's my favorite season. There's so much going on, but I'm so invested in everything. Marissa is never going to know peace. I'm now sure of that. She's never going to be allowed to be happy. Anytime she kind of is, either something bad happens and ruins it for her, like Teresa's pregnancy and Oliver in season one, or the situation is toxic, like her relationship with Alex. I feel incredibly sorry for her because the season was just beating her over the head over and over and over again. I really did not love the Summer, Zack, and Seth love triangle. It was just a repeat of their season one storyline, but worse because while I don't dislike Zack, I don't like him as much as I liked Anna and I really think that he should have left the show after Summer breaks up with him and we should have focused on Seth and Summer. I think it would have been fun if their storyline revolved around them trying to reconcile how different from each other they are. I think that their relationship is the one thing on the show that would have benefited a lot from being developed in a slower way. Maybe if we had ended season one with them kissing for the first time and then we had both Anna and Zach in this season. Maybe that would have made their story more interesting because then they would have to give up two people with whom on paper they are more compatible to be with each other, but whatever, it is what it is. Let's talk about Sandy now. I hate him. Early and late season two and mid season two of Sandy are two completely different people. It's really annoying because we had already tried the him being interested and in possibly cheating on Kirsten with someone from his past storyline in season one, and I hated it just as much as in this season. Well, that's not true. I hated it more here because it went on for too long and went too far. It really made me think of Sandy as someone who doesn't care about anyone or anything other than himself and what he wants, and I know that that's not him. And then in the second half of the season, he tries to act like nothing happened and is shocked that Kirsten was negatively affected by his action. On Kirsten, I feel really bad for her. Her life sucks. And in some ways, I see Marissa's horrible life as a mirror of hers. Not as extreme, but still, the two seem to be weirdly similar, and I don't know if that's on purpose or not. But anyways, I feel so bad for everything that her family has put her through, and it makes total sense that Sandy's betrayal was the last straw. I didn't really like the relationship between Lindsay and Ryan. I feel like I was watching the same episode over and over again. I don't think that they were together for more than one episode at the time, and I got tired of them getting together and then breaking up after the first time it was done. Also, I think that the end of her storyline was kind of lame. Like, I understand why she left from the point of her being mad at Caleb and the writers needing to write her out because she can end up with Ryan, but it felt anticlimactic for her to leave after everything that everyone had done to try and make things work and after she knew that she was Caleb's daughter. Moving on to Alex, I liked Alex a lot. I think her character was fun and added something different to the dynamics in the group. I didn't like the sexualization of her personality and people, and by people I mean Seth, constantly making inappropriate comments about it, but it's 2005, so why did I expect? Last thing I'm going to talk about is Trey, probably my favorite storyline of the show so far. Now, I do want to say that I already knew how the season ended, but I was still incredibly invested in the story. I was at the edge of my seat every time he interacted with Marissa, and it kind of made me sad because in a different world, Trey would have become fully rehabilitated and would have been able to have a good life with a good woman and I was like hoping that he would change but that was just me being delusional because I already knew how the season ended. Before we finish this video I am now going to give you what my hopes are for the next season. I don't have much expectations for Summer and Seth I just hope that they don't get into another love triangle. I hope that Kirsten divorces Sandy. Just kidding. But I do hope that Sandy gets his shit together and stops being a selfish idiot and focuses on the things that matter aka his family and kids. I hope Jimmy leaves again early in the season because I really don't want to put up with him again um like i said in the recap of the previous season i hope and i think that season three is the perfect opportunity for marissa to be focusing on herself and thus we focus on her her experiences how they change her how she deals with them how she recovers from them 
Season 3 is really the perfect opportunity to make Marissa a fully developed being and not just a damsel in distress for everybody else to save. In the same vein, I hope that Ryan can develop a personality that doesn't revolve around saving everyone all the time and maybe we can see him develop interests outside of that. And lastly, I hope that Ryan and Marissa don't get back together. Their relationship is not good for either of them. It brings out the worst out of both of them and they are both miserable together. So I hope that we can see them grow and that Marissa in particular not only does not date Ryan but also doesn't date anybody else. I want her to be single and I want her to be happy at least for like three episodes in a row. All right, so that was all for today's video. Make sure to like and subscribe for part two where we will discuss season three and four. Let me know what you think of the show and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!